I really like to work on music compilations lately since uh, that is the nicest way of really spend time with your record collection and I collected a lot of records and there's plenty and I'm even sometimes surprised what I find in there and working for Late Night Tales was an even better opportunity to dig for some diamonds in my vinyl collection and uh, compile them together which was great fun. The person you're talking to is Nils Fram. Um, I'm a musician I suppose. Uh, some people call me an artist as well. I do play piano instruments uh, of all sorts. I compose my own music. I play live performances and I also work in a studio. I always like recording since I'm a little boy. Starting over here to the very right, we have a nice collection of classical music all kinds of classical music, all, all composers. Um, I all, I'm always surprised how ugly sometimes the artworks are. But, but the music is usually much better, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it's really interesting stuff, like interesting, very nerdy pictures of people wearing way too big glasses, which is supposedly cool now, like, Look, everybody, aren't these glasses kind of cool? They are. And blurry pictures of usually bold men wearing glasses, playing instruments. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is uh, uh, classical music. Sounds especially nice on vinyl when you hear some stuff from represses from 30s, 40s recordings, mono recordings. I'm really into the very, very kind of old and odd uh, interpretations of common pieces and then we uh, have a stack here which is blocking some of my selected works of classical music big composers boxes which I always have a hard time um, listening to all of them because they're 10 12 vinyl each and then we um, approach the jazz jazz section which which spreads out over here and also over here then I have some electronica Oh no, singer-songwriter, all kinds of classic, classic singer-songwriter stuff. Uh, more like, uh, I would say, independent pop music. Um, more electronica and techno. Uh, dub music and everything what's kind of undefiable. And I like this section a lot. This is all my friends. Like records I got from friends who also are musicians. Right. Uh, rival consoles from Erased Tapes, Douglas Dare, and so on, Chili, Chili Gonzalez, he gave me that. And so here is when I, when I miss my friends after Klang. I, I always find them here. Ben Lucas Boysen, Max Cooper, Colin Stetson. Uh, another great Colin Stetson record, really love that. And it goes on like this forever, like Peter Broderick, Greg Haynes, Dawn of Midi, who I recently toured with in Europe. Then there's some nice CD boxes over here, like I like good packaging for CDs. I mean, the media is kind of cheap, but the packaging can be very nice. This is uh, by a friend who runs a great label called Kning Disc. This is a great friend, a phonograph, a mobile phonograph. Um, it doesn't need power, you can play uh, old phonograph record 78s on it and you can take it in the park for a picnic or something. So, And then there's some 7 inches here, I mean it, it never stops, you know, like all my 7 inches. And, and I even have like a mini disc collection of some really old uh, um, self-made recordings or, I mean mini discs, so ridiculous. I can't throw them away. There's still like some stuff on there and never digitalized or anything. So it's like uh, basically all my, my histories in this shelf. <laughs> I wanted to approach uh, this compilation in a 
little more free way. Uh, so I, I decided to record tracks and also manipulate them a little bit and take my freedom like as a recording artist to overlay them. Sometimes there are three to four tracks on top of each other and there's like reverbs and the whole studio is basically uh, patched in the compilation uh, making process and I had everything in Cubase like working like more like very uh, fine-tuning things and getting speeds right and re-recording in different speeds and changing the original material slightly which made me sweat a little bit because I understand that all these songs I used are very good how they are initially but in order to make them fit together as a whole listening experience I wanted them to, to alter them a little bit which I think is hopefully what is best for the music. Yeah, when I when I did the um, the mix for Late Night Tales, I I I definitely had to put some Miles Davis on there because he's one of my favorite musicians. Um, so I in the end I came up with one track from Sketches of Spain, which I think is probably one of the more odd records of Miles Davis. Um, it is a collaboration between Miles Davis and Gil Evans, who. Yeah, is the most fascinating arranger from that scene, from that time. Um, fantastic guy. And he managed to, to combine the feeling of, of this, the, yeah, of kind of a Spanish uh, a bullfight atmosphere with contemporary advanced jazz. And um, I think that record is a sheer success and uh, yeah, one of my favorite pieces of music. In, the, in a way, I would have loved to put the whole record on the compilation, but I, I had to go for one track, for one part of a track. And um, yeah, it's a fascinating piece of music, but if you like what you hear, then uh, check out the whole record, because I think it's really worth listening to. Pretty much everybody should know Boards of Canada. If you don't know Boards of Canada, then find out about Boards of Canada. And uh, this Boards of Canada record um, is called In a Beautiful Place Out in the Country. Show some beautiful pic pictures. Um, it's an EP which runs on 45. And in the process of recording my records uh, to my computer in order to make the compilation, I accidentally played it back on 33 rounds per minute, which makes the track way too slow. And I, I loved, loved how it sounded. And so in the mix, I kept it in the wrong speed. And I really hope that the brothers of Boards of Canada won't hate me for that. But I think it sounds so good. And I hope they don't see it as an offense. The track works in both speeds very well. And I think this, this is yeah, a good attribute for a good track when it works in whatever speed, uh, I think. Um, yeah, but uh, in the, on the vinyl of the Late Night Hells, you'll find it in the right speed because there needs to be some dignity to Boards of Canada who deserve their track to be played back in the right speed, I suppose. Um, just giving an alternative. Kind of a cheap find on any flea market is probably this record. It goes for five to ten dollars. Uh, Black Gold by Nina Simone. Yet one of my favorite Nina Simone records. It's a live performance, and there's this really adorable song on it. It's called um, "Who Knows Where the Time Goes." It's a long track, and in the beginning she talks about the thing we call time and how we do everything by the clock. And she, she winds up this, this beautiful story into this 
and to this wonderful song which starts a little bit like a Velvet Underground guitar lick and there I thought really she 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 doesn't have one one um, genre of music or she's not in one genre of music she's all over the place it's a mixture between soul jazz rock and roll like this kind of almost singer songwriter kind of feel she's simply herself she does Lena Simone music and She's a good example why I thought it would be so nice to not make neoclassical music or not make jazz music, not make this, but just make my music, which could be Niels Fram music. So she's a big inspiration. She just does her thing. Yeah, it's a good record. Not so exciting looking, but very exciting from the inside. Rhythm and sound. I call it maybe the most important contribution to dub. No, let's say it is the most important contribution, German contribution to dub. Um, in my opinion, uh, working in Berlin, reinventing kind of the ways of cutting vinyl, being recording artist, being producers of dub music, collaborating with bull wackies from Brooklyn, um, a, a reggae and dub label, I think, for me, the best reggae and dub imprint there is, still reissuing unreleased dub music, lost and found records, uh, together with the record uh, shop Hardwax, kind of the biggest installation for this type of music here in Germany. And uh, it's fantastic to see that they still like put these records out all in fantastic quality. And, uh, they always keep it in stock, no limited, whatever. It's just, it's just a good, good thing. And Rhythm and Sound with that track really, uh, I don't know, it, it shocked me to hear this. Like this track really shocked me. I, I didn't know that how you could use space in a track, like space between the frequencies, between the elements and leave so much space yet have something so big and full sounding. Um, yeah, really inspirational. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous that I didn't do that track. <laughs> I wanted to introduce you to some uh, 78s records. They are 10 inch in format. This is where the 10 inch format comes from originally. They are older than normal vinyl and they are much harder. If I would let it drop, it would break into a lot of pieces. The um, recording player you need for this could be a very small one like this. It's all mechanic acoustic setup so there's no electricity going in the thing it's just basically this needle here you can hear it already it's not so sensitive like a hi-fi needle so you can really touch it it doesn't matter the only thing you have to do to listen to it um, we listen to Gene Autry by the way why did I choose it I simply have it why do I have it because I like to buy these records and you can buy them pretty much everywhere in second-hand shops. It's fun when you travel the world like I do. You can, you can find them, but you can never listen to them. And usually you don't know the artist because it's music from the 30s, 40s, maybe 20s. And most of them are simply not well known today. And so you kind of, they, the artworks all look the same. So you can't really choose from the artwork as well. So you just simply have to hope that some good music is on there and you just buy them for one or two dollars a piece. And then when I bring them home via plane, some of them break, some survive. This survived. And uh, the title is called You're the Only Star. And I had to record it with a microphone from this machine because there's no output or anything we know as a musical output on this thing. So I put a microphone there, simple, simple mono microphone, recorded it on a little tape cassette recorder, 
took the tape, brought it over to my studio and put it into the computer and processed it with some reverb and delays those people surely didn't have access to in the 30s. And I think it made a nice match. Uh, how it sounds without any processing, just in the room. It's pretty much like this. I have to wind it up. This will wind up the motor and make it run for hopefully the whole duration of this side. And I can unlock the motor. Last but not least, I don't know what you call these, but you can you can look at um, all kinds of beautiful pictures from the Alps in here. I wish I could put it in the camera. Maybe we should try that soon. And here you can see. I mean, does it do anything? Is it cool? <laughs> <laughs> awesome, huh? Like this is this is really nice. The pictures look much better than the iPhone pictures I take from the Alps. <laughs>